The following episode was recorded on the 19th of May, 2020. This is the Sliding Doors podcast. I'm Sushil, and on the other end of this, on the other end of this microphone, is Rohan Tharyan. Rohan, that's a high energy high to all our listeners. So we're we're still in lockdown. We're uh, I'm in Chennai. Rohan is in Vellore, and we're still locked down. We're trying to do the best we can, and um, I've come across. A uh, couple of things that I want to talk about this uh, on this uh, episode. Last time we were speaking about um, really focusing on the things that matter, mindfulness, minimalism, that sort of thing. And um, there seems to be some discussion, um, that has been discussion for quite a while on the internet about how people can make the most of this downtime, this uh, um, the lockdown time, right? And uh, so, I've heard a lot, uh, Rohan, about um, people, you know, having this fear of missing out in this time, and they're feeling stressed out about it. FOMO. So. Yes. Uh, what's your take word. on that? The big four-letter <laughs> word. Fear of missing out. What's your take? Yeah, I uh, I didn't realize how much FOMO I had until I got to this, until this lockdown came around. Because I've never really had FOMO about uh, social media. Yeah. So like I'm not on Facebook. I've missed out on some posts. Right. That, that's never really bothered me. But with all this time, and I think that's something we should talk about, how sudden we still have the same 24 hours. Yeah. But now that we're all working from home, uh, a lot of the time that would have been eaten up by traveling or other logistical issues are now completely free. Yeah. So we actually um, have more time. Freed up. Yes. So it's weird, right? I thought, especially as a freelance, I mean, both of us are freelancers. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that at least for me, there would be no change because this is how I live my life from home anyway. Yeah. But there's been a shift. Just the fact that the world has moved online means that, for example, if friends want to catch up via Zoom, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. can do it at any point for yeah. however long you want. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to plan ahead like, hey, let's meet at this restaurant or coffee shop or whatever. And so my experience of FOMO in this period is just so many options of quote unquote constructive positive things to do yeah so it's been very easy for me to sort of uh laugh off fomo in the traditional sense of stuff happening online yeah but for me and my whole thing of self improvement and all of that i've realized that there's sort of a self improvement fomo as well yes um, yes very true i <laughs> I was I was uh, listening. I'm, I'm part of this Toastmasters group, right? The organization that helps public speaking. Yeah. And one of the members was talking about a couple of free online courses he's been taking just to, to you know, upgrade his skill level. And it really impressed me. But I noticed this subtle sort of anxiety that, you know what, maybe I should be taking these courses as well. Right. If everyone is making such good use of their time. Like on WhatsApp, you'll see all these messages about uh, new uh, hobbies people have taken up. They're gardening or, they, or they're cooking or whatever. Yeah. Everyone now seems to be so much more productive uh, in ways that they wouldn't have shared when they were at work at the office. Yeah. So that's been my window into this sort of form. There's just so much stuff happening that my introverted mind is struggling to just process everything. Uh, what about you? What have you experienced? Um, yeah, I, I actually had, um, I had a ton of plans. I wanted to do, I, I wanted to, uh, do a bit of stock, uh, video production in the studio and, um, redo the website and so many other things. And, um, as time went on and I didn't get down to those, it became a bit of a, uh, issue, you know, like uh, stressing out about um, why haven't I got around to this as yet, you know? 
And um, <laughs> you stress out? Do you get stressed, Sushil? I, 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 I don't think I've ever seen you stressed. Well, no, I, I did, of course. Um, especially at the beginning of the lockdown, you know, with uh, so many different um, things, the news was just stressful, man. And mm. I ended up having a kind of a low-level underlying stress to everything I did. And um, it broke right. through the surface eventually, you know. Um, I just couldn't take it anymore. And I, I didn't know that I was stressed at that level because I thought I was cool. Mm. Everything's fine. I'm safe inside my house. I have everything I need. Don't need to go out. Um, th there's no financial pressure. So what's there right. to worry about? You know, at least for the next one month, yeah. everything was sorted out. But... Um, right. Yeah, just watching the news, seeing the crazy stuff happening, it it, uh, it broke through. And uh, I had to learn to tune out the news and I had to learn to let go of stuff that I would normally have done. I stopped looking at Facebook unless it was something important. Um, right. I had to stop looking at WhatsApp for some stuff. And uh, instead, I decided to tune into something else. I went into uh, watching, I, I started binge watching Star Trek episodes, Star Trek The Next Generation. <laughs> yes, so, I remember you telling me. That was my outlet. <laughs> right. Still is for the moment. Right. Um, yeah, so, but yes, there's, there's also the stuff that I wanted to do a bit more on... Um, websites I, I wanted to learn more about uh, setting up voiceover uh, a voiceover booth which which i've actually managed to do finally but right um, yeah i wanted to explore fiverr a bit understand the entire system not really for work as such but to help other people um who were looking for freelance jobs so I explored that, understood that, understood uh, freelancer a little bit, uh, looked at other f uh, voiceover, freelance voiceover websites, and uh, spent about, about a good two weeks on understanding the voiceover business. Um, right. That was actually not me trying to do anything. It was just me distracting myself from the rest of the world. Um, and also right. trying to help someone else. Uh, so it was something yeah. outside my own sphere. So that helped a lot. How did you, uh, how, did, how did you manage this period of time? I think for me, a lot of it was, again, same. I think the whole nation went through what we went through, which is stress. But for me, I think the wake up was my father and his because he's in the he's a doctor so he's in healthcare and so this is his field i mean this is his territory rather so for him he was processing this and trying to see what he could do for the community and our earlier podcast our covid interview with him is an example of that yeah we should really but i think uh, stop for a second and say guys if you're joining us at this point so we've done two episodes with Rohan's dad, Dr. Pratap Tarin, and they are so insightful. They have, um, he's given us so much insight into the similarities between um, the HIV outbreak in the 1980s and COVID-19 today and um, how we can deal with it, how we can deal with it on a personal basis, on a personal level. and. The second episode was about how Sweden is dealing with it as a nation and um, what they're doing right, what they could do better and what we could learn from them. Such an insightful um, discussion that has been. Rohan, thank you for bringing that up. And guys, yeah, please listen fact, to that if you, if you, you can. To, uh, if you go to slidingdoorspodcast.com, you'll, you'll be able to listen to the interview as well as look at the PDFs my dad had prepared. Yeah. Uh, with all the data he's collected, he locked himself in a room for two days, literally. Like he would come out for just food and water and then head back in. Look at the PDFs and see the amount of work he's put in to back up everything he talks about in that second uh, podcast. It's an experience just to look at the PDFs, if nothing else. Yeah, there are, there are three uh, different PDFs, all uh, packed with information about Sweden and their policies and 
uh, background information on the people behind the uh, entire the Swedish system, the, the, their plan. Very insightful stuff. Yeah. And so it's that process of my father doing all of this that sort of shook me out of the uh, the anxiety, that mm -hmm. little uh, shell I'd, I'd hidden myself mm -hmm. in, because he was now giving me a way of doing something about it. So I didn't have any of the expertise, but you and I could put him on our show. We could write articles like there was something. But when you can take action, it seems to reduce anxiety a lot. Yeah. It's when you're helpless at home. And being inundated with, you know, uh, crazy statistics and numbers and different points of view and uh, anxiety from everyone around. That's when it becomes overwhelming. I agree 100%. And so my father sort of, yeah, so he sort of helped me, you know, uh, navigate those waters. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but yeah, so now that the government, well, not that anyone has this under control, but there's some process. Things are in motion. I think now the focus has come down to, uh, okay, fine. We may be at home for a while. Now what? Yeah. And then we get into this whole FOMO thing that we've been talking yeah. about, right? When we're trying to adapt to this new normal. There's, yeah, there's, there's everything in the world available on the internet. So how do you process? How do you prioritize? How do you pick out the stuff that is going to help you? Um, well, Help does not always have to mean improvement. Uh, entertainment is also help your, you know, it helps you relax and you need that also. So how do you prioritize with so much at your fingertips, right? That's the tough part. Right. I, I actually want to uh, uh, vent about WhatsApp. <laughs> but, before, <laughs> but before I do that, I'm curious, you, you play games. I, wa I was going to say you're a gamer, but I know you'll deny that. But you play games. I do. What's your experience with... Uh, because now you have time, right? And I'm sure a bunch of yeah. other people also free to play. Yeah. So have you experienced FOMO in the gaming world? I used to. Um, but, but I have a system. I have a, I have a way of um, dealing with the limited time I have on a, on a daily basis with my regular work. And, um, and being able to... Uh, play only certain games so what i do is i don't play games as soon as they're released multiple reasons um, among them is that i don't have the latest cutting edge hardware and the second is i don't really mind playing a game a couple of years after it's released so i for example gta 5 it came out a while back but I, Grand Theft Auto Five. Grand Theft. Yay! I know. I, I know it. <laughs> so GTA Five, um, the GTA series is a series I don't really like to play. I have GTA Three, uh, San Andreas, and the, the that's the four and four A or whatever you want to call it. And then there's GTA Five. GTA Five has been on my list of things to play for a long time. I've had the game for probably one and a half, two years. Uh, I don't remember when exactly it came out, but I got it soon after that. It was a humble bundle deal. It was really cheap, so I bought it. Um, so I've had that for a while. I haven't had the time to play it. I haven't had the motivation to play it. So now was a good time to get into it. So um, I picked that one game, but I have a hundred and something games that I haven't played in my Steam account. So I will get to them eventually, and I'm being, you know, I, I procrastinate about so many different things. This is just one of the other things that I, I added to my list. <laughs> gaming, I procrastinate <laughs> on my gaming. <laughs> so I'm not missing right. out. I will get to it eventually, maybe when I'm 50. <laughs> this is this is what, when you're 50, this is what fascinates me though, because you've dealt with the same problem of information overload or overload of options. Yeah. But you've dealt with it in a very uh, sort of laid back way. I'll get to it when I get to it, which I think suits your personality. Because for me and my need for order, there is always a system. And the more complicated the system, the more it appeals to me. <laughs> True. But then also there are the <laughs> other so, people who really need to play the game when it is launched. For example, there are people who will download a game um, 
the you know they have a package which allows which is downloaded before the release date so you'll have 30 or 50 gb downloaded and sitting on your computer and then on the uh, at the stroke of midnight on the day of release it will download a small package which will actually be the final executable file and 2 minutes later they'll be playing the game you know Wow. So that is that <laughs> wow. is people who are really, really into it and they do not want to miss out. Um, to them, I don't have anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> I say don't miss out. <laughs> Go for it. Fair enough. Fair Play enough. Play those games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then again, is... you know, it's, it's, it's what we were talking about in the previous episode, right? What gives you joy in your life? prioritize that yeah yes i think it comes down to even if i when i go on my whatsapp whatsapp rant it's that there are it's actually just me it's not it's not whatsapp it's not the people but because everyone is now home and everyone is doing stuff they have the time people who used to be stuck in the office the whole day are now working from home and so they have Time freed up from meetings or travel or whatever, whatever, wasted time in the office, which they're now putting to better use. Right. And so there's a lot more stuff happening that they're happy to share. So rather than just sitting around the, the uh, their desk talking to colleagues, they're now cooking or doing pottery or whatever. And Making so the, all these bread. photos and updates... Yes, sourdough bread. You have to share the photos of your experiment today. Or uh, homemade toddy, like I've been <laughs> attempting to do. Dude, you're not I've supposed to say that. To it's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, seriously? I don't know. We'll, we'll I, take that I, off. I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll cut that. We'll cut that. We'll cut that. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is that there are there's a lot of stuff happening, even on WhatsApp. And so... Yeah. It's it's an overload for me because I wake up and I'd see what at least fifteen different uh, uh, threads, yeah. all active, yeah. and each thread will have like ten, fifteen notifications, mm -hmm. and so a compulsive person like me feels the need to like open them all, make sure I've responded to everything. But I realize that uh, I mean, at looking at it, it's this it's this fear that if I don't open that group's message thread, yeah. I'm going to miss out on something that will take me away from that group. But rather that will, that will separate me from them, that distances me from them. Like I've missed out on something vital. But after a couple of days or say a week of just looking at the kinds of messages popping up, I, I quickly realized that, no, I'm not really missing out on that much. Like once a day, maybe in the evening, if I just read through everything i've missed take me about 30 seconds just to skim yeah uh and and i haven't really missed that much so at least for me it, it looks like this is more a question of refocusing attention uh -huh. like what is important for you and how can i how can i use whichever tool this is what can i how can i use it to do that whatever that may be um, okay. I'm, how how have you been? I'm I'm going to um, ask you, uh, you know, because you do that, uh, I think quite well. I see that you um, reply your messages on WhatsApp at a particular time of day and stuff. So people close to you will understand that. Um, Rohan's seen it and he'll get to it. It's not super important anyway. Um, but do you find that some people, especially in groups, uh, think that you're kind of ignoring them or? Uh, think that you're, uh, you've given them a lower priority on uh, on their relationship basis or something like that. Do you see any issues with that? Uh, luckily, luckily for me, I'm not the center of most groups. I'm usually a peripheral user, so no one expects Rohan to reply. But uh, I also know if they're, in, if they're important in my life, I know the people who will get um, hurt if I don't reply immediately. And so for those people, I'll make sure I, I reply or at least I let them know, listen, I've seen your message. I'll reply later. So I think those are, yeah, they can be, um, they can be handled on a person to person basis. Uh, I think it's also about setting intentions, right? Like as long as people know why you're not responding. Like if, for example, if one of our listeners was, 
was the center of a group, one option would be to share with the group this new thing you're trying, like just checking once a day or whatever. If the group is important enough, right? If they're not that close to you, it doesn't matter. Um, in fact, this uh, this is uh, th these are ideas I've been exploring in a book called Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. And we can link to that in the show notes. But he was talking about the impact that uh, this the digital world has on our lives. For example, uh, how these apps are designed to be addictive, right? So, for example, those those notification bubbles on on icons to to let you know that there are more messages. They used to be a different color, but then but then engineers found that red gets the most attention, and so they changed it to red and like a. a million other tiny ways in which these apps are designed to get us to open them. Uh, so it's it's the book, I, I bring the book up because it's around the same theme of deciding what you want before looking at the options out there. Because the, there could be, in the context of, say, WhatsApp messages, there could be 10 different groups chatting about stuff. And if you just want to burn some time, that's fine. But if, you're, if your FOMO is about, I'm missing out on connection, Cal Newport's argument would be that's not real connection. Or rather, that's connection, it's not conversation. And so he urges us to sort of make time to have uh, phone calls or video calls anywhere where you're engaging with people uh, with multiple variables of where you can pick up things on their tone, their mood, emotions. Like all these things seem to be important as part of our socializing process, socialization process. And and doing it on WhatsApp is so addictive because it's easy. Yeah. Like whatever mood you're in, you can send a message. Whereas you may not always have the energy to talk. True, true. Um, so Cal Newport's argument is that the talking part is important, but just put that aside. I think it come, my solution to this information overload and FOMO, uh, I've just taken it as a way of reassessing what's important to me. So instead of just reacting to this ocean of, in this case, WhatsApp messages, stop and ask, why am I opening WhatsApp? Like, what do I want from it? If it is, I want to find out how Sushil's doing, does it matter if I am on this group where Sushil and a bunch of my other friends are uh, are chatting? Or can I just message or call him? You know, so those are the kind of decisions I've been making. Um, what about you? Because you're, uh, what I like about you is you're way less structured than I am. So what, well, what, what secrets have you stumbled upon? Being less structured doesn't help really. It's just, you know, like... Um, it, um, what happens is it piles up and then there's this eruption of, you know, like outburst of FOMO. I'm missing out on work. Right. I'm missing out on play. I'm missing out on studying new stuff. I'm missing out on <laughs> Netflix episodes. <laughs> what am I doing? Where, where did all the time go? Yes. You know? So um, grabbing at all of these things and catching none of at them at the same time. So that happens once in a while, right. and um, yeah, I I just have to absorb that and let it go. Say okay, fine. Right. Do things a little more yeah. structured um, uh, during the during the week, and then that way I can slack off during the weekend. Uh, but. That is just, you know, just normal time management. It's uh, nothing special, nothing different. Um, you you um, are not really much of a face-to-face, a, a -face, like let's meet sort of person, right? Or, or, or am I wrong? Like you'd be perfectly fine doing a video call I'm, or a um, message exchange. I'm, yeah, I'm perfectly right? fine with that, yes. So then do you, I guess you don't feel FOMO in the social sense, right? Because everyone's now accessible. True. And I, I'm not a very social person anyway, right? Right. Um, so right. Well, you're not social in the, in the traditional, let's come and go and meet uh, sense. But then you are part of a lot of groups, uh, like we've talked about already, the parkour community. That is. And you and I do this every weekend. 
Yeah, so uh, what I mean by uh, not social meaning, I'm not really, um, I, I'm not part of any group. I've never been part of a group that says, hey, let's meet up and go out and do something fun every weekend or every uh, month or anything like that. So I, w I would probably have conversations right. with people or whatever. I'll have um, activities that I want to uh, do. Like uh, maybe I, I used to go for photo walks. I used to go on uh, these parkour uh, training sessions and all of that stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, in that way, yeah, social, but not the conventional social. Right. Yeah. So you don't feel like you're being left out of some group, uh, right? True. That's not that's not a problem you have to worry true. about. Hmm. This uh, Netflix, Star Trek, right? That must be your FOMO with your FOMO becomes apparent with gaming and movies. A uh, <laughs> uh, little bit. Uh, so what happened with Star Trek was I had started watching uh, the new series Star Trek Picard. And I watched that and uh, I mean, I, I started watching it and then I realized I never watched start, uh, The Next Generation fully as a kid. And I had really enjoyed that. So I decided I'm going to watch TNG and the original series uh, from episode one to, to the last episode. Um, I started that, but then Netflix has so much of stuff going on, man. There's so much. There's so much. <laughs> yes, I have noticed. And, yeah. And there's stuff coming out every two weeks. <laughs> and so I started off with that. And then I watched, uh, what else did I watch? I watched uh, Castlevania, something that I would never have watched otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> um, then I watched uh, Lock and Key. And then something else. And then something else. And yeah, I mean, now it's like um, I I don't want to stop watching. <laughs> right. Do you feel, a, do you notice a difference uh, now after the lockdown and before that? Because Netflix has always had a lot of stuff on it, right? I actually was not subscribed to Netflix before the lockdown. Ah, so this is an experiment in progress. Okay. I guess. Yeah. So I uh, one of the reasons I subscribed to Netflix was uh, Star Trek. Ah, yes, yes. So you were saying it's not available anywhere else. Yeah, I couldn't find it anywhere else. Um, also, so I I um, don't tell anybody about this, but I have popcorn time, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you want... gone, <laughs> they're gonna track you down and lock you up. I didn't tell you this. Okay, popcorn time. Right. Yeah. Anyway, so I was watching Lock and Key, and then one episode was missing, and um, I had to subscribe to Netflix for that, of course, because I couldn't watch episode six without watching episode five. <laughs> right. <laughs> so um, <laughs> yeah, uh, one more reason. But first world problems. <laughs> Third world boys having first world problems. Very true, dude. Very true. Uh, yeah. yeah, so life goes on, spend money. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I think it looks like opt the, the number of things we can do have gone up and it, during the lockdown and then this underlying FOMO that we've all had is just getting magnified. It is. Um, I'm, I'm now looking so at Netflix and there's this something called The Wandering Earth. I don't know if it's new or old, but it looks interesting. I've got to watch this now. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I've got my list. And then uh, again, talking about and then people give me suggestions as to what I should watch. And then when they ask me, have I watched it? It becomes very awkward because. Yeah, I mean, time I have that's that's another pressure, meaning, um, yeah, people watch it just uh, and then they um, it's part of their lives. Conversations, right? What do you speak about otherwise? Yes. <laughs> If it's not about the you know, latest episode of... You know you have a problem when people are getting back to you about, have you looked at the foreword that I just sent you? <laughs> that gets... <laughs> that's when... So I think we've gone out of the realm of fear of missing out to, I don't know what, fear of being beaten up for not having kept up with whatever that person so thinks this is, is important. This is, I think, um, um, keeping up with uh, your social circle, right? 
Yes, definitely uh, fear, guilt, a whole bunch of these wonderful emotions <laughs> thrown in. Thank you, lockdown. <laughs> Hashtag lockdown gift. So yeah. let, let's let's bring this all back in now. So your um, the previous episode of this podcast was talking about minimalism and how you can use your um, the things that are meaningful to you to focus your life around it, right? Uh, or something like that. Right. Was, did I get it right? Yes. Perfect. That's perfect. So right. rather than focusing on getting rid of stuff, so I thought, figure out what you want. You could guide me through four more in the social context, in the lockdown context, in the context of uh, having to develop yourself during this time when everybody else is developing themselves for the upcoming economies crash economy is going to crash everybody else will have better jobs because they've been spending their lockdown quarantine time studying and i have not how do we work this out yeah it sounds like it's not really about uh it's 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 paralysis by analysis so rather than worry about all the things you should be doing. I think a, a practical approach would be what you said, right? Okay, so if I need to retool when career-wise so that I have uh, a more uh, exciting future ahead, or at least there are prospects ahead for me, then that would make sense. Figure out what you need to do to retool. But that's very different from, oh my God, there are four courses being offered here. My friends have done that. Maybe I should take those courses as well. True. You see the difference, right? In one case, you are stuck. And I think this ties back to what we were talking about in minimalism is you're starting with the end in mind. So it's not what options are there, but what do I want to achieve? So for example, even during the day, how do I spend my day? It doesn't have to be, it is lockdown, people are learning, and so I should learn. True. It should be the old, what do I want to spend with my day? Okay, these are the options. Now of these, which do I want? So I, I think I deal with it, I, I try to deal with it by being a little more deliberate in what I do with my day. And I think also, um, if people didn't spend their lockdown being productive every single day or every week, I think that's okay because it is a stressful time, right? Um, like we started off with yeah. this in this conversation, we're all stressed out at some level or the other. Um, whether you're in a third world country and you don't know about, uh, you know, you don't know the realities of COVID, uh, you know that people are stressed out in your country. There's something going on, even if you don't see the news every day. Um, yeah. Or if you're in a first world country that's handling it really well, there are still people dying. Um, over 100,000 cases in India as of today and growing fast. Um, more than 3,000 something dead, I believe. Um, that's not as much as other countries, but it's still high and it's growing. So um, yes, it is a stressful time. So I think don't really worry about it too much. Um, you, do a little bit every day, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think the I think the basic, in fact, we should actually have a a, a podcast about this, about um, <clears throat> how, not really time management, but how to sort of focus, how to get things done, basically, because I'm by no means good at this, but I like learning about it. And so I think what you said, do a little bit every day is is a huge part of that. So whatever the goal is, break it down into chunks and start trying to, to chip yeah. away at it. Smaller chunks definitely um, helped me a lot. And that's something also I learned from, you know, from uh, some of these investing classes. Um, you can't really do all of it in one chunk. If you're going to retire, you can't put your money away in one chunk. It has to be done, uh, you know, just a little bit at a time, a week at a time. A right. Month at a time. And that's very true yeah. for your skills also, right? You don't become an artist yeah. in a day. It takes weeks and months and years. And uh, just practice time. Yeah, I think that getting started part is uh, is a huge, uh, huge step in the process. Just get started. Yeah. And that's uh, something we've 
been wrestling with, right? Especially with this podcast. That's that's, that's I mean, exactly what we tried to do, and uh, yeah, <laughs> we're struggling. And with, we're still chipping yeah. away. This yeah. is this is a Tuesday. We're supposed to have recorded on Sunday, but technical stuff popped up. Didn't stop us, did it, Sushil? Whether <laughs> it should have stopped us, Sunday. Us, a different story. <laughs> well, the our uh, the our audience will tell us whether it should have stopped us, <laughs> but we, <laughs> well, we're gonna plow on, right? Yeah. Deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so let us know if we should have stopped at episode two. <laughs> um, or whether you... Let us know if we should have stopped and whether you have any uh, topics you'd like us to discuss or whether you'd like to join us to discuss some topics. We're actually quite open uh, with, with where this podcast is headed. So let us know. Sushil, how could they... How, how, what's the best way for them to... Contact. The best way is slidingdosepodcast.com and from there you can subscribe. Um, you, there are links over there. You can subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Google, um, pretty much anything. Um, what platforms do you use? Let us know. Uh, we'll try to add those platforms if they're not in there. The, we have Stitcher. We have oh, so many. Um, right. Yeah. And then yes. we're on Instagram. Not as active over there, but do follow us, say hi, and we'll do our best to put out snippets of our episodes. And we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, where else? Everywhere. Those are the big ones. Those are the big ones. Join us on whichever platform you like. Say hi. Let us know what you liked, what you didn't like especially. And let us know if we should have stopped it at episode two. Thank you for joining us. I'm yes. Sushil. Thanks, thanks. Yes, and I'm Rohan. And this has been a fun episode, a fun little episode, a lockdown episode. There are links to our personal Instagram and websites and all that stuff in the description. Check it out. Thank you so much. Bye for now, folks.